I'm going to ask Shannon to pick up on this theme that Catherine has introduced on the role of investors, please. Perfect. Um, so one of the ways that uh, SHARE is working with investors to address the question of inequality uh, is by mobilizing investors for decent work. Uh, and this is a project that we've been working on with the Atkinson Foundation since 2016. Uh, the project is called Valuing Decent Work. Uh, and what we are doing with the foundation is mobilizing investors uh, to support uh, decent work practices in the companies that they're invested in. Now this is, the impetus for this project really uh, it emerged from the Atkinson Foundation seeking to pursue their mission of promoting social and economic justice, not only in how they're granting and using that 5% of their endowment, but actually looking at the 95% of their endowment which is invested in capital markets. Um, and so they also recognize that they're a fairly small investor, so on their own uh, they may not have a lot of impact. So they're working with SHARE to mobilize a much broader group of investors to start talking about workplace practices um, uh, and improving those as a way to address uh, inequality. So what I want to do very briefly is just talk about four things that investors can do um, to start to look at decent work and to promote decent work through their investment practices. And the first area that we've focused on over the past uh, 12 months is to seek better disclosure from companies on workplace practices. For those of us who spend a lot of time looking through corporate reports, we inevitably find the statement uh, that workers are our greatest assets, right? So which company doesn't say that, you know, to, in, in one way or the other? But when you start digging deeper, you start scratching your head because there's no further information about how they're actually protecting that asset or investing in that asset. And we certainly see that in, in Canadian corporate reporting that it's mostly window dressing and we're really not getting uh, a lot of valuable, comparable information from companies on how uh, they are um, uh, engaging with their workforce, uh, what their workforce composition is, how are they supporting uh, you know, really meaningful training, uh, how many full-time workers do they have versus part-time workers, uh, what is their approach to pay, not only in their, for their executive C-suite, but across their organizations, how are they approaching pay? This is the kind of information uh, that investors really need to understand how companies are managing and protecting and growing this crucial asset that they, that they talk about. Um, and so the lack of comparable data from companies is a major barrier to investors. But the other side of that is that companies are not going to report on something if investors aren't asking for it. And for the most part, investors have been fairly silent on this issue. Um, in generally speaking, in responsible investment, certainly we see that corporate governance and in environmental information has got a lot more attention than the S of the ESG. Um, but more and more, we are seeing investors uh, interested in this and wanting further information, partly for some of the reasons that uh, Catherine mentioned in terms of investors really recognizing the systemic risks associated with this growing inequality. Um, so we need investors to start asking for more and better corporate reporting, and that certainly uh, will be an ongoing focus for our work with the Atkinson Foundation over the next year. Um, the second area, uh, that the second way that investors can uh, start looking and supporting decent work is to engage with companies in their portfolios, not only asking for better reporting, but actually asking for better practices. Um, many of us are aware of the often poor working conditions that exist in, in clothing manufacturing factories, for example, or in an agricultural supply chains, but unfortunately it's not only the people growing our food and making our clothes uh, that are faced with poor working conditions, but we're we're also seeing people who are selling our clothes and uh, stocking the shelves in grocery stores here uh, in Canada are also facing increasingly precarious employment situations. Uh, and those practices not only have impacts on workers, but they also have impacts for the companies in terms of um, uh, in employee retention, in terms of staff morale, in terms of uh, um, 
productivity, uh, customer levels of customer service. And so these things are not only a question of supporting workers, they're also a question of, um, e of company performance and financial performance. Uh, one of the areas that SHARE has been engaging with companies on uh, in the retail sector, for example, uh, is on-call shift scheduling. Uh, so this is a practice where uh, somebody is scheduled to work, um, but two hours before the shift, they're required to call to see if they will actually fulfill that shift. Um, so this is something we're seeing in the retail sector in Canada, um, in the food uh, service sector, in the hotel sector. Um, so obviously this is a practice that causes a high level of stress for workers. They don't have secure income. They don't know if they're working 40 hours or 20 hours uh, o over their pay period. But again, it also contributes to this instability for companies in terms of um, high level of turnover, low staff morale, uh, certainly seen evidence uh, of impacts on productivity and levels of customer service. Uh, so we've been talking to those companies uh, asking um, that uh, they develop policies on shift scheduling that allow workers uh, adequate lead time and certainty of income. And the interesting part of those conversations are actually when uh, we see uh, retail companies particularly using franchise models. And so they may have a policy in place that applies to their corporate operations, but not necessarily to their franchise operations. So also looking at how they are applying policies across their operations, not only for their corporate operations, but also for their franchisees. Uh, third one, very quickly, uh, talk to your investment managers. This is the very basic thing uh, that any uh, foundations or universities or pension funds can do is just simply ask your investment managers, are you looking at workplace practices? Is this being integrated into the way that you're making investment decisions? Uh, if so, what kinds of metrics are you looking at? Are you looking at employee retention, for example? Uh, are you looking at certain levels of sales per employee or uh, sales per square feet? What are the kinds of metrics that you're looking at? Uh, training hours, there's uh, a number of very valuable metrics, but what are investment managers actually looking at and incorporating into their investment decisions? Uh, and finally, the fourth one I'll just touch on is that Investors have an opportunity to look at these kinds of practices and labor standards not only in their public equities, but in other asset classes. And we're seeing interesting uh, initiatives emerging uh, in infrastructure uh, and in real estate. So in infrastructure, we're seeing uh, some of the bigger funds, particularly in the US, starting to adopt standards uh, with regards to the infrastructure uh, investments uh, in, which include protecting unionized jobs, uh, which include um, job preservation, so that job loss won't be a result of the infrastructure investment. Uh, we're also seeing uh, some standards around preserving public assets. Uh, and, and so those are some ways that investors are trying to incorporate these considerations into their infrastructure. On the real estate side, um, there's been a longer history of the use of responsible contracting policies, um, which are ways for investors to uh, uphold and, and show their preference for contractors that have strong labor standards or are unionized, both in the construction side of the real estate, but also on the operation side. So uh, with regards to security staff, for example, um, cleaning staff uh, in the ongoing operations of commercial properties. Um, and SHARE has developed a model responsible contractor policy. If anyone's interested in that, I can certainly share it. But those are just four really brief among um, a lot of other opportunities that we can talk about, but four things that uh, we've identified of ways that investors can really start to look at decent work.